Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Intro to Swift. In this episode, we're going to look at functions, how to write them, how to call them, and also type aliases. Functions in Swift are pretty much the same as functions in any other language, so we're not going to spend too much time on them. We're mainly just going to look at their syntax, which is a little bit different in Swift. There are, however, some newer features that go along with functions in Swift, like type aliases that we're going to look at, and a few others that will be covered in future videos. So, to begin, in case you don't know what a function is, it is essentially a data structure, it's a block of code that can take, it can possibly take input, it does something, and then it possibly returns a value. We're going to write a bunch of math related functions today that will possibly take input, most likely numbers, it'll do some kind of math, and it'll possibly return uh, a piece of data, it'll result in a piece of data. So we're going to start with the most basic function, a function that takes no input and results in no data. And what we're going to do is we're going to print out the average of two numbers. So to declare a function in Swift, you start with the reserved word func to denote that you're creating a function. Then we'll go ahead and give it a name. We will call this print average. Then we put in our parentheses, and this is where we would put in our parameters or arguments if we had any, but we don't, so we're not going to do anything there. <coughs> if you had a return type, you would also put that in, but we'll get to that later. We're going to use our curly braces, and here we go. This is a function called print average. It takes no parameters, no data, and it results in no data. All it's going to do is it's going to do print ln and it's going to print out uh, 1 plus 2 divided by 2. So it'll print out the average of 1 and 2. And Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Okay, so this print average is uh, set up correctly. You'll notice we don't have any output, which is what I was worried about for a second. Uh, but what we're doing here is we're taking the numbers 1 and 2 and we're finding the average by adding them together and dividing by the number of numbers. So this will be 3 and 3 divided by 2, which is 1 and a half. And we will get that in a second. Now notice, we don't require any data in order to perform this operation. We already know the exact numbers. We have the numbers 1 and 2, and we know that there are two numbers. We don't need that. And it's not going to result in any data. It's just going to print it straight out to the console, or this sidebar, really. So we don't need to worry about handling the value. It'll print the value for us. To use this simple function, we simply call it by its name, print average. And we use the empty set of parentheses, parentheses. And you'll notice that up here, it does say 1. You don't have to worry about the fact that it says 1. Uh, I guess we could probably just fix that by doing that. The problem was, when you use numbers like 1 and 2 and they're integers, and you divide, you can't have fractions with integers. If I use doubles, then I can. So uh, if I put the point 0, I'm saying it's allowed to have a decimal place, therefore it'll be 1.5. So that is obviously working very well. When I call this print average function, it will print out 1 plus 2, and then it'll divide that by 2, and then it'll print out that result. So that's the function. Now, why would you want to write this in a function? This particular function isn't a great example, because it's very rare that you would want to find the average of 1 and 2, and also you could just know that it's 1.5. But uh, in the case that you maybe wanted to change these values to be 2 and 2, and if you had that line in five different places in your code, you'd have to find those five places and change it instead of just changing it once and it changes every time you call it. That'll make more sense once you write a more useful function. This next function is going to take in two values and return 
sorry, and print out their average. So we're going to go ahead and write function, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to say um, function print average of. Now I could name it print average, and that's fine, but I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, that's overloading, and I will get to that eventually, but this is going to print the average of two numbers. We'll name them A and B. Again, this is not going to result in any data. Uh, it's just going to print it out, and I believe that they need, yes, they do need some types. So these are both going to be, we'll just call them doubles, because we want to have that point zero to make sure that it has a decimal place. So it's going to take in the values A and B, both of which are type double, and it's going to print out the result. So we're simply going to print out A plus B divided by 2.0. So the print average of is ready. We can go ahead and call it by saying print average of <coughs> excuse me. And we now need to put the numbers that we're going to use. So we'll go ahead and use the numbers uh, 4 and 5. You can see it then says 4.5. It added 4 and 5 to get 9, and it divided by 2 to get 4.5. If I were to change this to 6, it would of course say 5. It would be 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So we now have a more useful version of the uh, average function because this can now take in the two numbers that we want to average and it will average them for us and it'll print it out. So we began with some hard-coded values of 1 and 2. Now you can actually have... Uh, what's it called? You can now actually have uh, custom values. You can put in your A and B numbers and it'll do it. We have one last function to write. This function is going to get the average of two numbers and it's going to give it to you in the form of a number. So instead of just printing it out, it's going to actually return it so that we could assign it as a variable. We go ahead and write func get average, or you could just call it average. Again, this is going to take in a which is a double and b which is also a double. But since this is going to result in data, it's going to result in a double. It's going to take those two numbers, add them up, and divide them by two. We use the lambda notation of the arrow, which is saying this function get average is going to result in, it's going to convert over to a double. So we're now saying when I call this and I give it these values, it's going to give me back a double. That's what the arrow means. And we have an error because we're not actually giving back any data right now. When you are ready to give back data to the caller, you simply use the word return. We're going to return a plus b divided by 2.0. And what that will do is it will take that value and it will make that be the result of this function and then it will stop. So if I had a line like here, like print hello, it's going to tell me that's unreachable. Code after return will never be executed. This is never going to happen because as soon as I reach that return, the function doesn't need to do any more work. It found its value and it's done. We'll go ahead and try uh, using it. We'll go ahead and call get average with the values of uh, 1.5 and 3.0. And it says... 2.25, but this is not really going to do us any good. You'll notice this is a, a value. It's not printing it. The printing is in the double quotes, so we can tell that it's printing out this result. But this is just telling us that the value of this expression, it becomes 2.25, but we never use this value. So we could go ahead and assign it. We could say let avg equal get average. So we're now storing the result of this into the variable avg. So that variable is now equal to 2.25, which is the result of this call. I could write 2.25 there, but if I don't know that number or if this get average function could result in different output based on different factors, you would just use the function version. And finally, I could print out uh, the average of 
1.5 and 3.0 is and AVG. <coughs> Excuse me. So it'll then print out the average of 1.5 and 3.0 is 2.25. So we stored this get average result, the result of this, which is a double, to this variable, and then we printed out the value of it in a message. So we now have the result of this stored, and we can use it later. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at type definitions. Sorry, type aliases. A type alias Excuse me. A type alias is essentially uh, <coughs> the. It's like you can give a name to a particular layout or header of a function. For example, if you have a function that will uh, take in two doubles and return a double, you could name that type a an averager. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this could be useful. We'll go ahead and use the type alias reserved word, and we're going to name this averager. <coughs> this is the averager type alias is going to represent some sort of a function that will take two numbers and um, uh, average them. So we'll have a, which is a double, and b, which is a double, and it's going to result in a double. So when I refer to something as an averager, I'm saying it's something that takes two doubles as input and results in a double. This get average function would count as an averager. But why would this be useful? Let's say we have a function called do average. It's going to take in the two numbers. But maybe there's a certain way that we want to do the. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Maybe there's a certain way that we want to do the average. Maybe there's more than one way to do the average, and we want to allow it to change based on how we uh, call the function. So we could also have an averager, which is of type averager. And we'll just say that this results in a double. This will take in two doubles and also some sort of a function that takes two doubles and results in a double. And we're going to use this averager uh, variable, and we can just call it as if it's a function, giving it the a and b. And we're going to want to get rid of those, I believe. No, we need them. Okay, so here is another quick feature before we continue. Um, We'll stick those in. So Swift has uh, labels for the parameters, and this may look a little bit confusing, uh, but to make it look a little bit easier, let's just rename these variables to first and second. We have two doubles here, which are the first double and the second double. So in Swift, you're required in some cases to label your variable names. So instead of just writing A and B, I'm saying first is A and second is B. So it requires the two doubles first and second, so I'm doing it like this. This is sort of similar to the builder pattern. If you have a particular class that has a lot of data and you're trying to instantiate it and you have five different strings in a row, instead of having to keep track of which is which, you would use the builder pattern. In this case, you can say, oh, the first is going to be A, and the second is going to be B. So you can tell exactly which variables belong where by using the labels. So they are sometimes required, and if you don't have them, you'll get a little circle over here, and it'll just add them for you. Back to what we were talking about before, I can simply call the averager variable as if it's a function because it really is. It's a definition of a function that takes two variables and results in a double. And we're going to return this value. Again, this isn't terribly useful, but let's go ahead and see how exactly we could use this. We'll go ahead and say let avg2 or 1 equal, so we're going to do do average 
with the values of 3.5 and 10.8. Then we get to this averager, and we need to give it some sort of thing that it needs to conform to the two doubles to make a double. And we can't just write get average. We can't just do that. Or no, we can. Okay. So we actually can just do this. And if you take a look, you'll see that it actually does make sense. An averager is something that takes two doubles and results in a double. This takes two doubles and results in a double. So what this is going to do is it's going to use this averager, giving it the first and the second, which is 3.5 and 10.8, and in this case, it's just going to add them and divide by 2. But let's say we don't want to use get average. We want to use a different thing that will also add in a 0, and then it'll divide it by 3. We want to use our curly braces here, and we're going to write a, or we're going to write first, second, in, like that. So the first and second values are going to be in, and then we're going to return first plus second plus 0.0, .0 divided by 3.0. Now this does look a little bit, <coughs> excuse me, this does look a little bit strange. It really doesn't look like a function that we've dealt with before, but we're basically taking in these values, the first and second that we said here, and then we're re returning the double that we need to return, which is first plus second plus zero divided by three. So it's a little bit different than the other one. And just to leave it here, instead of doing that, as long as we have something that conforms to the double double results in double, we could just say get average. <clears throat> just like that and uh, those would both work. <coughs> now, really quickly, why would you use a function? As I touched on before, we can look at this get average function. This is the most useful function that we've written today. If we wanted to change the way that the average is computed, and if we were using this get average function 10 times in our project, we would have to track down each of the 10 times that we did it and make the change. If we call it by its name of get average, we only have that code in one place. So if I wanted to change this line, I would do it once and it would apply for all the times now and all the times in the future. Instead of having to hunt it down and change it every single time, I want to make a small change. If you introduce a bug somewhere, uh, it's a lot easier to fix it once than to fix it 20 times because then you have to track it down and you're constantly running into the same bug but you're not sure if it's really the same bug or maybe a different one. So that is how functions, uh, variable parameter labels, and type aliases work in Swift. As always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn, if you like this video, click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon with some more coding. Bye for now.